What is going on guys? Welcome to this Python tutorial series for machine learning. In today's video we're going to talk about support vector machines and these support vector machines are very powerful tools for classifying data uh, by using something called support vectors and in some cases they even outperform neural networks. For example if we have handwritten digits um, neural networks perform worse than, uh, or at least ordinary neural networks, most of the time perform worse than support vector machines, uh, except of course for some convolutional neural network that is specialized on image data, but in general linear support vector machines uh, can be very powerful, so let us get into the explanation. So how do support vector machines basically work? Now imagine again we have a coordinate system with two features, so we have feature uh, one and we have feature two up here and then we have a bunch of different data points uh, let's take some red ones up here and some blue ones down here so these are the two classes these are the data points of the two classes and what we want to do now is again we want to split them into two classes and we want to make a model we want to train a machine learning model so that we can classify unknown points in the future. So for example, if I get a green point here, uh, I want the model to tell me that this is red. Uh, if I get it here, I want it to tell me that this is blue and it should just make intelligent choices. Now with K neighbors classifications, what we did is we calculated the nearest neighbors for each point. So if it was here, we just calculated, let's say K was three. We said, okay, this is the distance here. This is the next distance here. Uh, probably this is the third nearest point, so this is a red point. Um, with support vector machines, we do something else. We actually train a mathematical function, a linear function, to split the data. So what we do is we want to have a line that splits the data in some way, and not just in any way, but in a specific way, in the most optimal, in the most generalized way. So um, this function would split the data points into two classes uh, accurately. This one would do it as well, this one would split them, this one would split them. So we basically have infinite, uh, an infinite amount of solutions for splitting the data into the two classes, red and blue. But what we want is the most generalized, so the most optimal line. And this would look somewhat like this one here. Why? Because this is the line that is furthest away from all the points. And in order to do that, in order to find that line, what we use is we use so-called support vectors. So we take the nearest point to the line, in this case, I don't think that that's the point though, uh, maybe this is the nearest point to the line, and we use a support vector, which is a parallel line uh, from, from the baseline. So we have this parallel support vector, and we do the same thing on the other side. Uh, in this case, let's say this is the nearest point. Um, and actually you would see that this is not an optimal model because here we have a less space than here. The goal is that this, this area here is called the margin. So this here, the, the green stuff here, is called the margin area. And the margin is the space where there are no points, where basically the free space between the line and our points. And of course we want to have uh, a ratio of 50, 50 here, so 50% here, 50% here basically. And we want to find the line that splits the, uh, the two classes or the points in two classes uh, and has the biggest or the largest margin. This is how we classify uh, or this is how we train the model. We want to train a model that has uh, the biggest, mar the largest margin. And then, of course, when we have a gray point and we say this is my gray point, it will be a red point. If I say this is my gray point, it will be a blue point and so on. So this line is what we use to classify future data. Now the problem is though that in real life the data that we're going to encounter is never that structured and that well formatted. The data in real life looks somewhat like this. So we have a couple of red points here all over the place. Um, of course it depends on the data. Sometimes the data is structured but a lot of times the data will look somewhat like this and you can somehow spot the different classes. So you can say, okay, if you go to the top right, there are the blue dots or the blue points, the blue data points basically, and uh, to the bottom left we find the red data points. But it's very hard to draw a line here. Actually it's impossible to draw a line here. And even if you say, okay, the model is now going to be a uh, cubic function or a quadratic function, 
it is very hard to say that this, for example, is the model. It doesn't work pretty well. So uh, we have to find a different way of classifying these points. And in order to do that, there is a concept called uh, kernel or kernels, uh, basically kernel functions that uh, add a third dimension or an additional dimension to our data. So in this case, we have feature one and we have feature two. This is two dimensional data here. And what we're going to try now is to somehow add an additional third dimension so that we can then add a hyperplane or use a hyperplane uh, to separate the data. So uh, it's a little bit complicated here, but what we're actually doing is we have this flat data, uh, which is two dimensional. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to lift it up into a third dimension. And we hope that we can somehow lift up the blue points over the red points or the red points over the blue points and then draw a hyperplane, which is a just a plane, basically a two dimensional plane uh, through the data that separates blue and red points. Now, the tricky thing here is that we're not allowed to add new data because kernels just use the data that we already have. So we use feature one and feature two to create feature three, more or less. So we're uh, making the data more redundant. We're not adding new data and we're just combining F1 and F2 to add this kernel function, to add this kernel value. Uh, and what we're trying to do is if we have like a three dimensional uh, plot in the end, we try to have to separate them in the third dimension because of course we're not able to separate them in two dimensions. We cannot draw lines, we cannot draw cubic or quadratic functions here to separate them. So what we try to do is we try to use the third dimension in order to separate these values. Uh, using a kernel function. And of course, this kernel function, um, you can define it however you want. You can also say, okay, the kernel function is F3. I'm just going to call it feature three right now, is F1 plus F2. Um, but of course, this doesn't make a lot of sense. You could do that, but uh, actually we use predefined kernel functions that are optimized for, uh, for doing this operation on the data. So this is a very useful method to separate data that is inseparable in two dimensions. Now, last but not least, before we get into the code, I wanna talk about a concept called the soft margin. And the soft margin is basically um, a little bit like a tolerance. So let's say we have a bunch of red points or red dots uh, up here. And we have a bunch of blue dots down here again. And then, what we have is we maybe have uh, a blue dot here and a red point down here. And of course, what, what we could do is we could just go ahead and say, okay, the line of the support vector classifier is uh, this line here because it separates blue and red and it's the optimal line. It's the best generalized line that separates both classes, that separates both uh, uh, types of points, both colors. Uh, but of course, every one of us sees that this is not the optimal line. If you look at this as a human, you see that this is not the best line that you can find. Even though we can find a blue, uh, blue dot up here and a red dot down here, the optimal line would probably look somewhat like this. Um, and this is where the, the concept of soft margin comes into play because we can define a soft margin, for example, a soft margin of two that says, okay, we're just going to allow for misclassifications up to a certain amount so that we can choose a better model. So in this case, we allow for two misclassifications and we say, okay, uh, we misclassify one blue point and one red point, doesn't matter, but this is still the best line in the end. Now, of course, you should not define a soft margin of 1000 because then maybe your model uh, becomes inaccurate, but basically by allowing some errors, allowing some misclassifications for outliers, you make the model more accurate in the long term. So this is the concept of soft margin. So now let us get into the code of support vector machine application in Python. And you're not going to notice that much of a difference from the last video because we're actually just going to change the model. In the last video, we used uh, K neighbors classification. And today we're going to use support vector machines. And this is the case because we're not implementing the things ourselves. We're just choosing the models from sklearn. We're not implementing the algorithms. We're not implementing uh, the mathematics. So the differences here are going to be the models uh, we choose or the model we choose. Uh, maybe the output will be different. The accuracy might be higher or lower. Uh, and we're going to add some parameters because uh, support vector machines have kernels and soft margins. Uh, 
So let's start by importing again from sklearn.datasets import load breast cancer data. So we're going to use the same data set. Also, we're going to import from sklearn.model selection import the train test split so that we can split our data. And we're going to import from sklearn.svm import SVC, which stands for support vector classifier. So this is the support vector machine that we're going to use. And for comparison, we're also going to import from sklearn neighbors import k neighbors classifier, which we used in the last video just to compare the accuracy. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to say data equals load breast cancer. Then we're going to say x equals data dot, uh, what was it, features, what was it? No, data dot data, sorry. Uh, and y equals data dot target. I think target, not targets. Yeah, target. Uh, in the next step, we're going to split the data again into training and testing data. So we're going to say x train. I always forget what the uh, what the order was. So oh yeah, x train, x test, and y train, y test. And this is the train test split of x and y. And we're going to choose a test size of 0 0.2, which is 20% of the data. So there we go, we have our training data, our testing data, and the only thing that we need to do now is we need to define a classifier and we're going to choose an SVC classifier. And now we can define a, uh, we can define two values, actually we can define a lot of values, but uh, we can define the two values that we talked about, the kernel function and the soft margin. So to define a kernel function, we can just say kernel equals and the default is the RBF and I'm not going to get into the um, into the functions themselves in too much detail, but we have the RBF, uh, which takes quite a lot of time to be processed. We have the polynomial, um, but what we're going to use is the fastest, which is the linear. So linear doesn't take a lot of time, doesn't take a lot of resources. Um, and basically, this is the kernel that we're going to use to add a third dimension, or actually not a third dimension, sorry, because we have, I don't know how many features, maybe 30, so just an additional dimension. Uh, and then we have the parameter C, which is just a soft margin. So I can say I allow for a soft margin of three, maybe a soft margin of five, 10, who cares? Uh, I'm going to use three, just uh, this is a good value for outliers. And this is now our support vector classifier, support vector machine. This is the model. And we just have to train this model. We say classifier.fit x train and y train. So we fit it on the training data again. And basically that's it. We can now score it. We can just print the clf.score of x test and y test to see if it's or what the accuracy is. And then we can compare it later on with the k neighbors classification. So let's see what it says. Take some time. There you go. It says 49.74%, somewhat like that. And now we're going to add a second classifier. We're going to say CLF2 equals K neighbors classifier with K, or actually it was N neighbors. N neighbors equals three. And we're going to say CLF2.fit, the same training data and the same testing data. And uh, basically, we're going to just copy that and use CLF2 here. Then we can see the difference in accuracy. And you can see that in this case, in this particular uh, case here, we have 98% uh, for the support vector classifier and 92% for uh, the K neighbors classification. Now, of course, these values always change because the train test split function uh, does a random split every time. If we, wanted, uh, if we want to have the values uh, staying the same in, uh, all the time, we could define a random state. So we could say random state equals, I don't know, 23. And then we will always get the same results. So if I say 23, I'll always get the random state of 23. And I will always get these percentages, 96, 95. I can run this again, you will see the same percentages. 
96, 95. So if you want to have the same state all the time, you pick a number and you have the same thing over and over again. But uh, this is not what we want because we want to see if on average it's always the case. So we can see this time SVC, actually let's add a print here. Uh, let's use these fancy strings here. These are the fancy formatting strings of Python. Uh, let's say SVC is, and then we can use these curly brackets here. Basically, and we can do the same thing for this classification here. So KNN. And there you go. But in this case, we had, again, lower percentage for the K nearest neighbors classification. Now it takes some time. Oh, yeah. This time, the K and N outperformed the SVC. So it's roughly the same. You can say it's somewhere around 90 to or 92 to 98% uh, accuracy, both of them. So maybe it makes a difference in uh, higher level data. For example, I know that if you want to classify handwritten digits, uh, K nearest neighbors is not a very good choice, but linear support vector machines or support vector machines in general are uh, even outperforming neural networks. So this is basically how you test that. And uh, yeah, that's it. So that was the video on support vector machines. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. If so, hit the like button to support this channel and have more free videos in the future. Of course, also feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. And of course, if you want to see more future videos for free, subscribe to this channel to not miss a video. And that's basically it. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye. Thank you.